Robert Blomfield was a medical student at the University of Edinburgh from 1956 until 1964. He was also a prolific amateur photographer, using the city as his training ground. Since he passed away in 2020, his family had been looking for a home for his photographic archive. The University of Edinburgh has been working with the Blomfeld family to preserve Robert's work and his legacy. Through this process of archiving and cataloging, we're learning more about the man behind the camera and slowly starting to reveal how Robert became a student of light. My dad always had a camera with him, uh, multiple cameras most of the time, multiple lenses. There isn't a memory of him without a camera, really. He always had a camera, that was the thing. So if it wasn't around his neck, it was because he was driving the car, but then it was on the footwell of the car. It's just been a constant through our life, even, even up to when he passed away, you know, he still had his camera. So it's just been there all the time. Yeah, I used to remember if we were, if we were traveling anywhere, going to Sheffield to visit my gran, for instance, and we'd be driving across the countryside and it suddenly it just pull the car over because he'd seen something that interested him and out would come the camera and everyone would groan you know <laughs> here we go again and he'd be snapping away at you know a tree or some sort of sunset or something it was just a feature of our lives that our dad was a complete camera nut He had a natural ability for it, definitely. I don't think he understood it himself, that he had this... He understood that the, good, the work was good, but I got the impression he didn't quite understand how he did it, in a way. He just un intrinsically understood how to compose and how it was all going to work out. And I never got to the bottom of how he did that. I think he definitely had a disarming personality. Anyone within seconds of meeting anybody he'd be cracking a joke or uh, he'd be interested in them asking questions about about them you know he's definitely won these people over he's disarmed them hasn't he yeah. and got a laugh out of them as that was his style he was not confrontational. I tell you the funny thing about that guy on the right there, the, the newspaper dude, the way he's laughing looks like Daddy's laughed, doesn't it? With his face. He was very warm as a person and looking for humour all the time, looking to find some point of connection with that person. He had an infectious laugh back then, so he will have got away with stuff through that too. I think a smile goes a long way, and he definitely had a smile. I think um, one thing about these pictures is it's not a coincidence that it was when he came to Edinburgh that he really matured as a photographer because it's there's nowhere else like it and photographically it's it's so inspiring the light is special here what he's done with his this body of work special Especially considering he wasn't, he didn't have all the time in the world to do it. He wasn't doing it professionally. It was in between his studies and when you're studying for medicine, that's a lot of work. And that for me is also what's special about it, it's pure passion. There's no agenda, no one's telling him to go and shoot this or that or the other, it's just pure.
with his medicine career and his photography. His interest is in people. That's the, that's the common thread through all of his life. And you see that in the photography, the way he sort of, he just seems to bring something out of people. So I think he just had an interest in people and getting to know them, whether it was as a doctor or as a photographer. He was clearly a, quite a free spirit, so he would just up sticks and do whatever. And the sort of classic story of him midway through his studies, pedalling off to Turkey, didn't bother to tell his tutors, you know, just decided he was a bit bored of medicine, needed a break, got on his bike and went to Turkey. He didn't go with the intention of going to Turkey, he just sort of see where he ended up, and he ended up in Turkey, you know. So that's the kind of person he was, just doing these mad adventures. It's a wonder that he survived them, really, but it was kind of part of who he was, just this free spirit that you couldn't really pin down. One thing I was always conscious of actually growing up, uh, or certainly later when I realised we had this precious collection of pictures all over the house mm. and the cupboards full of them, and if there was ever a fire, that was it. I mean, a life's work was going to be gone. Mm. I think being at the university, they've got the right kind of facilities to store them safely for posterity. Mm. Well, it's great to be able to pass on the baton to some professionals like you say who are at the university who are going to be able to uncover so much more than we have so far. I know that there's hundreds or probably thousands of photos that even we haven't seen. He never wanted a fuss made about his pictures particularly or he said he didn't but but he liked the idea that they were kind of coming home, as it were. So I think he'd be, he'd be chuffed. I suppose what's an interesting question was what our mum would make of it as well. Because she started this process when we were all busy doing other things. So, I mean, at the time when my mum was um, trawling around the galleries, this was in the early to mid 2000s, you know, championing his cause and trying to get people engaged in them. And it mostly seemed that people were just brushing her off. Her heart was definitely in the right place. She was, she was great at understanding that they were good photos and that they needed archiving but she didn't really know how to do it, even with her art history background, how to, which doors to knock on and how to know when to let go of the copyright to a certain extent so that they could start to see the light of day, especially in the advert of the internet. She was quite scared that they were just gonna get a life of their own without any form of control. I think we've got the project to a place that she could never have imagined getting to. It's where she wanted to get to, but she couldn't really, she just she never could get the traction to um, to get it here, so I think she'd be pretty, pretty pleased with how things have evolved. The future of the of the archive. Yeah. It's nice to for it to go into somebody else's realm and see how they react to it and see what comes up. I think that's part of the reason why we want to get involved with the university because they're infinitely qualified. I feel to, to unearth some gems. I'm sure they'll see context we haven't seen. They'll make connections between images and historical events. And I think a new generation of students will see something, something in them that we haven't as well. 
It's all in the eye of the beholder, isn't it?